evening, everybody. Welcome to Lockpod. Wow. Ukraine's number one podcast. <laughs> Ukraine? Ukraine? Oh, no. I had <laughs> Ukraine on the mind. You had like an evening No, I voice. was looking at that lady that got killed by Alec Baldwin. I was Good thinking evening. Ukraine. Oh, oh man. Oh, yeah. That was something. Yeah, that's a bad That's a bad day for Alec Baldwin. It's a worse day for her and the other person that got shot. It's very, very tragic. I cannot... I, I'm anxious to see what the facts are around, around that. Like, how does a prop... What are the rules about a prop gun... Uh, on a set. I imagine he was shooting what he thought was a prop gun in the middle of a scene. No, how could they, how could you shoot the cinematographer and a director because, in the like, middle of a you're scene? Not thinking They're about not it. in the scene. But what I'm saying is he could have been 20 feet away from him. It could but, have been like a stray shot, like you get in the wow. streets. When, I mean, the director of photographer is looking usually, down a camera and maybe he's shooting towards the camera. Right, right. Wow. Right, exactly. Wow. But like, I mean, and he thought it was a blank, I imagine, and it wasn't. Well, and even blanks can still shoot out projectiles. Really? It still has a cap. So what, like there's something like lodged in the barrel, and then when the blank fired, it like right. Pro- but how could that be? That'd be any, well, every time you fire a prop gun in a in a Well, you probably Western. have to like clear it and make sure there's nothing in the chamber. Yeah, I don't know. This you is going to be interesting because I'm sure there's like rules in cinematography about or in movies or whatever about like this is how you get ready to shoot a prop gun. Dude. And if you didn't follow those rules. But like, what is in a prop gun where you can fatally shoot? Is it the cap? Is there? It does is it take cap. real it's bullets? Like a, no, it doesn't take real bullets. Okay. It's like a, well, the same. Thing it's like the gunpowder without the, the projectile, right? Then this how could it happened kill on the yeah. um, the set of the crow with crow. Brandon Lee. Yeah, mm-hmm. but didn't they put it right up against her head or something like no, that? No, they put it right. He put his hand on the front, and it went through the cap. Went through his hand and into his head. Whoa, that's not good. All no, right, so, so the cap. I mean, things. it's not just loose powder. It's like a cap. That you uh, put so into the cap, the gum. The and ca- so the top of the cap, it's like usually plastic, probably uh-huh. is what was the projectile. But it's like going like, but if it ignites, it still can. Usually it doesn't, but sometimes there's still a chance that it can but go out the front of the gun. I just think there's got to be like some guy, like well, like, pyrotechnic guy or somebody that. Right here it is, Kevin Kelly Mickey, a Hammond police officer. Oh, right, she would know. She said there's a prop master that handles it, and then it's supposed to be double-checked when handed to the actor. Right, so, so the something actor, went wrong. The yeah, actor so thinks he's got a through. clean gun. It's not, So yeah. it doesn't sound like it, that's the case, that Alec Baldwin, he Sounds thought he like had they a were cutting gun. corners. So so if, somebody's well, in trouble. But. Right, so if there are rules like this, right, then the question first becomes, did the prop master check the gun and right. did he hand it to Alec? If there, that's the case, then to me, Alec did nothing wrong. He's just the one that pulled the trigger, right. unfortunately. Right, I right. I mean, from a criminal standpoint, right. not even well, a reckless standpoint. I agree with you. I don't think there could be criminal intent. There's no, there's no intent. Right. right, there's no mens rea. Right, but you could also act recklessly. Like for example, if he didn't but follow like, the rules, he's an actor right. following a script, right, and then pointing a gun. If we're using Lindsay's log- logic at the camera, and he pulls a trigger on a blank gun, so he thinks, but somebody that gave it to him messed up. If that's the facts, if right. the facts are he didn't talk to the prop master, the prop master never checked it. He blew off the prop master. He was screwing around before the scene. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, those are mm-hmm. all potential where exactly. he, could, he could be acting recklessly. And you can get charged recklessly. And by the way, you know, conduct. look at the picture of Alec Baldwin. They're out in the middle of the oh, desert. So there could be like a rock that got in, into the, you know, who knows what it was, right? Could you imagine like a little pebble that gets in there or something? And oh, then he's you, distraught. Well, you killed somebody. Yeah, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not saying he shouldn't be. I'm That'd just be saying. the worst day ever. Absolutely. I think his career is going to be tough to. Uh, yeah, dude. I don't think he can recover from this. He's got enough money to last him for the rest of his life. Well, I mean, but like that's he's, a. Yeah, uh, man. That's, that's not much solace. But. It's devastating. I mean, it's devastating. It's really, it's obviously a horrible accident, but like he'll never forget it. Obviously, he's the one to pull the trigger and on a gun he thought was clean, you know, and obviously was not. But if anybody messed around at all, then they're going to get charged with murder, yeah. right? If oh, anybody. Yeah. Like <clears throat> no, like like let's say there was an actual bullet in there. And Crazy. Somebody's like, ha, ha, ha. or someone like replaced the prop gun with a real gun. Right. Like, nuts. Right. We'll find out. It's going to be interesting to see that. That's why I can't wait to see the facts on this. It's going to be very big, interesting. Big, big, lots of news yesterday. They got the wow. Brian Laundry, right? His oh, yeah, body his remains. remains. That's the guy with uh, Gabby Petito, the the creep boyfriend that took his girlfriend across the country. And Got in a fight with her and then ended up killing her. Allegedly. Strangled. Right. Yes. Well, well at this point, he's dead. So well, yeah. Can't I, mean, even, <laughs> we I think if I, was innocent, now. if I was innocent, I wouldn't run away and kill myself. Right. right. There you go. <laughs> right. Or yeah. if you were that distraught, you'd probably kill yourself like where she was dead. So we've been saying he's guilty for a long time. Let's just call him guilty. It's official now. I'd say so. <laughs> I mean, what's he going to do? Come after us? I don't think but, so. So someone yeah. in the chat, Joe said in the chat. So 
they f- while finding Brian's remains, they found eight other remains. Is what? this true? Can anyone confirm? That's this? my worst freaking nightmare. Know. What is going on? As mayor, like, like if you're looking we're for somebody, train Wolf Lake. Yeah, no, <laughs> don't train Wolf Lake. Do not train Wolf oh Lake. My. Right? That's my worst fear. Don't do that. That's funny. There's no bodies I mean, in Wolf Lake funny, for the record. No. Or George Lake or the little cow. Don't no. drain the little. Don't but drain just don't the drain them. Don't drain the grand cow though, <laughs> no. please. Um, I mean that's that's something, right? Eight. I don't know. I've not heard that, John. Eight other sets of remains. I hadn't either. But wow, wow. that mayor is pissed. Yeah. Well, I think hell yeah. Un- You're like, what the hell? <laughs> like, like, like it was in the middle got, of nowhere. Suddenly, you have nine uh, murders <laughs> instead like of a one. state state park or something. But you know, the thing that's going to come out about that, there was all this talk about like his parents and where his parents hiding him and right. all this other crazy stuff. I have a feeling. And internet sleuths were saying like. He's in the backyard under the garden and crazy shit. Kevin like and I that. were talking about this yesterday, though, as a parent. Now, if your kid comes home in a similar situation as Brian Laudry did and he's under suspicion for killing his girlfriend, and as parents, if you knew your kid was going to go off and kill himself, would you let him? Because even though you know he's probably going to go to jail for most of the rest of his life, hmm. I wouldn't want my kid to kill himself. I would be like, hey, listen, you got to face the music, Lindsay. You know, it's very unfortunate what happened. <laughs> what? Lindsay, love what you, you baby. Brian. Brian. I love you, baby. Poor Brian. I love you even, <laughs> in, even in prison. I will still love you, right? Yeah. And then I would be like, we'll get you uh, the best public defender I could find. <laughs> Yikes. Right? <laughs> Some oh. good public you wouldn't call Kevin, there, by the way. No, no. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kevin's I, not a criminal defense lawyer. Not anymore. I did... Mm, Kevin did I think that. probably 10 different criminal defense criminal trials criminal too, trials man. I think I had I know nine, 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 eight or nine not guilties I'm allowed to I'm allowed to diss on Kevin yeah. but he has a great career but yeah, if I got in trouble like that me. I'd call Kevin and say Kevin I need the best lawyer yeah. you could find, uh, find one, right? and then he would call John Cantrell so. <laughs> Kevin fight. get a hold of John Cantrell <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I mean John's good John is damn the best good. John is damn good yeah John is good the thing honestly about Johnny Law that is his nickname. Yes. He is fast on his feet, man. That's yeah, yeah. I think you, that's his best. One of the quickest thinkers. And I've ever by the met way, he's been through a thousand trials, probably. So, like, I mean, I'm just, I'm saying, he's been through hundreds and hundreds of probably trials. Probably, probably, I bet John's probably at a hundred, uh, probably near a hundred jury trials. I okay, bet. so what which I'm is saying crazy is, a lot. By the so way, so he's seen a lot of trial. Absolutely, right? he's been doing criminal law for two decades. He's and he's fast on his feet. Yep. You right? remember when he was like, on that's a podcast a good and we were talking about that teacher who. Was yeah, and he came up with a defense like yeah. that, dude. <laughs> that was crazy, right? But that's a great example of Johnny Law. That, that's point. the day I was like, if I ever get in trouble, I'm calling yeah. this dude yeah. like right away. John knows his stuff. Not that I'm worried about that. I'm no. just saying, if you were ever in a situation facing criminal liability, I think Johnny Law is a, a good option. He's, He's not even advertising on us. You know what? You're so right. He owes us a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, now right he does. If I Johnny, kill my husband. I'm calling him. That's right. Lindsay. He's my call one, Johnny Law. He's my one phone call. He's right. We even you um, could call your dad. I mean, that's fine. I know people uh, too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, you just said that you know I'll get you a good private or uh, public defense lawyer. So I think I'll just call him and cut to the chase. Cut to the chase. Not worry about your dad. Yeah, <laughs> not worry. Sorry. You know what? Leave I don't know. If we, this seems like an open and shut case, Lindsay. We're just going to go with the public defender. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I in talking here, guys. Yeah. I find it hard to even look at Tom, but because of something. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> Dude, what? Is it tr- what don't, you, you, what, don't bring your drama on here, no, no. dude. We're sitting where did doing you go show? this week? No, where were you th- like <laughs> two days ago in the morning, Tom? Huh. Let me think. <laughs> Let me check my calendar, okay? You look, you look, speaking of looking guilty. <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? The cat that ate the canary. I don't canary. know where I was at all times. Kevin, you think you I have... memorized? It's hard enough knowing what I'm doing today, and I'm supposed to like keep in mind what I did last for week. The, for those of you that have listened to the pod for a long, long time, yeah. name one media outlet that Tom McDermott loves to criticize. I criticize them all. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then he goes it. on that <laughs> same goes on that Twitter. Same... Twitter? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Not the oh, Times either. Facebook, you're right. <laughs> no. WMCD. Oh. Tom McDermott, the featured interviewee. What the hell happened here? What are you talking about? <laughs> you, you railed against this station <laughs> I'm a, for I'm gonna, constantly. I'm a candidate for statewide office, Vesmar. <laughs> like, I got to get my goddamn word out, you know? By the way, you did do a good job on the Senate questions. Thank you. They were good. Thank you. Like, Vesmar's all freaking offended. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah, I'm a man of principle. That's why. I'm a man Amen. of principle, Amen, too, John. Dude. But Thank I gotta, you, Kevin. I got to put my message out, you know? Hmm. I'm a man of principle, except when I need ca- to get my message <laughs> Come out. Come on, campaign manager. <laughs> no, I thought you did a great job with the Senate questions. So, hold it. Am I they supposed to, like, ignore people that are mean to me? No. No, you don't. In like, fact, you, you speak. You have to do that mean, all the time. They're mean to me, and they're mean to the city of Hammond. 
I agree with that. That, That's what the bullshit is. It's like, no, they are like literally yeah. they take pleasure in slamming the city. Whenever Hammond. something negative because about Hammond's me. out there, they want to rip Hammond. Because it's because, because it me. undermines you. Right. Yeah. So like that's the thing about WJOB that I do not support is and, they and, are constantly criticizing the city that I love and I live in and I think is doing well. And you lead. Right. And yeah. so like I don't think it's wise for me to participate financially in WJOB and I won't because – I feel like I'm contributing to something that likes to criticize the city I'm in charge of. And the trolls are the worst on that show. I mean, it's just terrible. Were, there, were there trolls? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh. It's just terrible. It's mm. all right. I mean, you're going to have haters, right? I mean, you know that. I have haters. Yes, you do. I'm, um, I'm become, you know, like if people are constantly banging on you. Like, I, I always say this. Okay, if I was a boxer, and I'm not, and I went out there against a boxer, the boxer and I got boxer. slugged right in the freaking nose, I'd be like, son of a bitch. <laughs> like, what the hell? That's the worst thing ever, right? <laughs> right. But you look at these other boxers, and they get hit in the face, and they don't even think about it, right? Over time, I think that's what you become. You become numb to it because it's like, oh, dude, that's just part of my job, right? I get hit in the face. That's what I do, right? It, sometimes it really hurts, but most of the time, I don't feel it. Right? Yeah, I think, like, all kidding aside, right, it's important for you to get your narrative and your story out there when all that they're doing is ripping you, and they have no facts. Um, and hold no on. Why don't you direct your, your comments towards the guy that like is attacking you right now? You're looking <laughs> well, at me saying this, I and think I we did were both that. Kind of like really take, take those go comments and direct them towards us? Mr. Vem- Vesmar, who is obviously offended. That it's I, like you just snuck on though. That I'm like, campaigning. You could have at least said, "Hey guys, what am I supposed to do? I knew you guys weren't going to take it well. <laughs> no, but so I this... knew you guys would not take that well. So I'm like, I choose not to <laughs> let you. F- I was hoping you guys would never even know. You oh guys, yeah. Obviously, you were listening to WJOB, a hole. Well, I get like. 50 texts you know what else you probably didn't want us to know because this is why i'm oh, sore about it this comes on leave. no no this the locomotive is like <laughs> checking out Shh, i don't need this shit i come on air coming into station attack. i get attacked daily and then i come in the freaking studio you guys are attacking we're not me. haters this yeah. comes on the heels of receiving a picture of you tom mm. eating food from a <laughs> oh, restaurant you swear awesome. You'd never eat at again. What are you talking about? For those longtime Lockpot <laughs> listeners, the, what are you, you talking may, about? You may I'm, recall who's Tom, taking a picture of me eating. Uh, someone that, that trusts Lockpot, that trusts me and John, your wife. We can't reveal our so, source. Oh, right. oh, John, I'm sorry. We cannot reveal. What our are you sources. talking about? Like, so, I don't even know what the hell you you're talking this, about. For those longtime Lockpot listeners, you may recall uh, Mayor Tom talking about how he got infuriated at a local Mexican restaurant when he found out they yeah, put jalapenos. A tip. All right, and guess what? Yeah. The photo By the way, was. You what eating, was I met? You on. eating jalapenos was a photo we received recently. <laughs> I wasn't at jalapenos. <laughs> it, well, it was takeout. It was Mexican food in a oh, yeah. in a styrofoam box. You had no idea. It was I like, had no idea. It didn't, I, it didn't have like a logo on it. It was just, hey, honey, you want tacos? I got this great Mexican food. I'm like, please, thank you, honey. I don't think that's I love how you, it went Marissa. Down. She that's didn't say what the restaurant was. I love was. you, Marissa, for doing that. Thank you. And, and she then said, I, I'm and going to jalapenos. She said, no, no, no way. I'm I a don't, man of principle, I, dude. I don't like go into details about where Marissa's going <laughs> to eat every day. Like, what kind of this husband are you, Jan? I want to know exactly where you're going to be today. That's just not how I roll, Kevin. All right. So anyway, <laughs> so to recap, <laughs> to recap our day on Tom's, this, this day sucks. Already. Tom's principled uh, life. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title. <laughs> so hold it. Tom's principled life. I like that. So, by the way, let's go back. Why am I mad at jalapenos? Because of the fact that they forced gratuity, forced gratuity That's, on you they, that they, they did not tell me. you about. They yeah. tricked me. Yes. And I end and up tipping. And then another occasion without... they wouldn't sit without the full party. So like, check it out. So last night I'm at another great Mexican restaurant, mm-hmm. Casa Del Mar. Ah, Love that place. Mm, Love it. Great place. Wonderful. Right. Mm-hmm. And they gave me the check at the end. It says tip is included in this amount on the check. Nice. Bam. That's smart. Bam! Because then it's you not can't sneaky. Be... Mm-hmm. It's not going to piss off a customer like me where I never go back to your place. It's not again. putting a sign at the door on the way right? out. Right on the way out after <laughs> you already do it. Right? They put it on the bill. And then, like, I had a, a kudos a, Casa Del Mar. And then I was with Lindsay a couple weeks ago. We were at a restaurant. I forgot the gentleman's name that helped us there. He comes up to us and he goes, "I just wanted to let you know." You told us that on the that air. the tip is included in you that t- amount. I don't want you yeah. to accidentally double tip. And I'm right. like, "Thank you, young mm-hmm. man." And then you tipped him. I because gave him of like that. an extra freaking 10, yeah. 15 bucks on top of it. I'm like, "This <laughs> he guy hired him immediately." It was it was right? reverse He's psychology. Now chief of staff. <laughs> <laughs> it was reverse psychology. The guy's like, I, "I listen to the podcast. I'm going to tell exactly. this guy about I the think tip." He did. And he's going to tip. I think he was a listener. Lindsay and I were talking about that. Because he was like super attentive the whole time, and 
he like he pointed out the, the double t- largest margarita ever. <laughs> Lindsay got like a fishbowl margarita, <laughs> and she just and I don't think that was normal for sure. A lot of no, that was listener. definitely not right. Normal. It was embarrassing. <laughs> it was so big. It was like my daughter's got an issue, right? Like big. <laughs> he is like everybody's lot. walking by, like holy crap, that that chick is. She, she had a bachelorette party. That was that big. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it was that big. One of those. It was that big <laughs> with a fifteen-year-old kid, with my parents, <laughs> and my husband. Bachelorette party. <laughs> That's your, what a bachelorette party. <laughs> Yeah, that's how she rolls. So fun. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize about going on WJLB. I apologize about not telling you guys. Good, you should it. be sorry. No, you don't have to be apologize about going on. Just apologize about not telling us. Okay. All right. So the enough. rule is, is, like, I can't. Tom's apology segment to his <laughs> to his two <laughs> fellow lockpotters. <laughs> I did not tell you on purpose because I knew you would give me the business. Yes, I'm not going to say it's business. okay, Thank but you, I'm sweetie. glad that you've owned up to it. I have owned up to it. I went, and I may go again. And you one did day. a good job. Thank I you. thought you did a good job. Well, I do. I like, I didn't listen. I boycotted. <laughs> it's like honestly, hell yeah, John. <laughs> it's it's like if I get invited on Fox News, am I going to be like, oh, I'm not going no, on Fox News? You're going like Buddha Judge goes on Fox News. And what if you get invited to go on um, <clears throat> something called the tr- Truth Social? Yeah, uh, John's <laughs> oh. probably already a member. <laughs> I signed up for the beta. I was going to really? ask you if you signed no, up for the beta. I haven't yet. Oh what God, a joke. I'm do not. Gonna, do not. He's going to fail. Truth. What is it called? The truth. You know, honestly, I read it. It's the Donald, True social. Donald Trump is starting a new platform, uh, like a Twitter yeah, didn't rival. Yeah, did it already like tank? No, he, he tried it once and it tanked. Yeah, well, but this somebody is somebody like hacked his account. And that put was some... no, no, that was, that was fake. This is oh, new. Okay. This is yeah. this is launching as we speak. Um, he's it's called the Truth Social. Appropriate word because uh, okay. you know Donald Trump was definitely a man of the truth. We Amen. all know that, right? Amen. Just preaching the truth all the time. So Every why day. not? You know. Every day on Twitter. By the way, nice work by uh, Donald Trump ripping Colin Powell and his uh, condolences. I know, dude. What a. I mean, John Wright. What an asshole. Mm. Seriously, John. Mm. He did the same thing Come when on. John McCain yeah, he died. Did. When it's like, don't you have war heroes? Just the, just the. He does like he does the ability. He doesn't. Yeah, he's an asshole. Yeah, he is. My concern is that there's so many of these social networks launching, it's not going to make a splash. Like, there's Getter. Oh, that's why you're worried about it? (laughs) G-E-T-T-R, Getter. Isn't that a new one? Getter. There's Grindr. There's all kinds of stuff Grindr? I'm on that one. (laughs) Oh, I mean, what... (laughs) Oh, you're saying, John, you're it's already making an excuse Tom McD, for it. three, four, six, nine at grinder.com. See, John's already like, John's making an excuse. He's saying like, you know, there's so it, many social networks. It's gonna fail. It, that's why it's going to fail. Let me tell you why I think <laughs> no, it's going to fail. I'm not saying it's going to fail. I'm, I'm glad he's doing it. You Great know what? For him. Donald Trump is not going to love this. And you know why, John? Because he loves to piss off liberals. And no liberal, no Democrat in their right mind is ever going to go on the stupid truth social media platform. Right. So he'll just be like, it's sort of like WJLB is. It's an echo chamber. You go on there with like-minded people that think exactly the same, and they all sit there and jack each and other off. Which is the oh God, you're so smart, Mr. President. You know, like right. it's going to be just a big echo chamber. Which is the big, That's which is the one problem. of the problems. Right. I agree, John. With the, which is the one of the biggest problems with social media. You can you can feed into what you want to hear, or you can find anything that you want to read about. Mm-hmm. That that's your perspective, and right. that's part of the problem is you don't go out and like look at the facts, see the other perspective. I think that's important if you're doing research. I just want a social network that's not censoring people, but people are on there talking about what they talk about on Facebook. Uh, yeah, they have one. It's called Twitter. I was going to say yeah. that's why I like yeah, Twitter. It's and not Facebook. true though. Twitter is a huge <laughs> censorship. Yeah, when you endorse when you advocate shit. when you advocate to attack our capital and they kick you off, that's called censorship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Free speech. That's all I yeah. want. It's, uh, just, some or, would call it treasonous, you know, whatever. Or just some people visiting a building. <laughs> it was just some people. It was a, this is just it a nice like they day. were just there to take we a look at We were just there on January 6th enjoying the scenery. I climbed up the wall. It was so nice. You know? No, but serious Statutor- question. So if someone, statuary hall. Say serious question. So if someone posts that on Twitter, like January 6th was just a protest. Should it be? Should they be blocked, removed? No. Why can't they just say it? I don't think it. John, why don't you try it out? <laughs> but the person Seriously, that, fo- John, I, but the person that foments the the, right. the insurrection, yes. yes, I think maybe right. they should be protested. If John, be I think we should test it. I think John should post January 6th was just a protest. And if <laughs> they kick you off, be on there you, forever. All right, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I guarantee you, John, you're not going to get censored. Okay, January 6th was just a protest. I'd, be, I'd love it if put, you and then put at Lockpot at the bottom. So no, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> they're not going to censor us. <laughs> Hashtag Jack Dorsey. There you go. <laughs> what do you think? He's going to get it, and he's going to be like, this He's out. Smote him. Lock pods banned. <laughs> Lock pods Lock pod goes off the air. <laughs> like, I didn't even know Twitter could do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, we got a great guest today. Uh, Hammond's chief of police, Andy Short, we're is our guest. On. He's going to be in here very soon, actually. Yeah. We're, so we're going to get some ads done, and then... Uh, 
And then we're going to talk some. Chicago. By the way, what, what about this? Get, like getting the guests. Good work, by the way, by our locomotive. Oh yeah, that booking was, the guests. All me. Where was our business manager, Steve Kellogg? Dude, he was probably in France, or you know, <laughs> with, the with our flying, book. flying, <laughs> flying first class. Let's review. I, by the way, I haven't got a penny since we started this podcast. No, this is like forced labor. You're not the only one, Lindsay. <laughs> John's like Lindsay. Have oh. you got any money? Like cash on me right now? No, from Lockpod. <laughs> is Lindsay like, listening to the like, show? She's not. Lindsay's no. like, what's going on? She's I like, got here like five. She's on the chat I, I, I pulled it. I was on the chat boards. <laughs> she's chat like, do boards? I have money on me? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Have here. you gotten paid a penny from this? Because you are a part uh, owner. No, definitely not. I mean, we got the entire ownership in here right now. And the only one that's made any money off of Lockpod is the employee. The Steve Kellogg, our business This is manager. 100% not of the an ownership. employee, just an independent contractor. He's an independent contractor. He's like taking our profits and traveling He has our checkbook. And then, like, when we need a guest lined up, who does it? One of the owners. <laughs> and not only locomotive. is it a guest that you had to book, but it's a guest that literally Steve sees every day. <laughs> That's a good like, point. he could just walk this into his true. office and be like, hey, do you want to be on the pod? He didn't. But it's, he's Tom in France right it. now. He can't walk into the office. He's like, <laughs> is he in France? I'm just saying. By the Probably. way, <laughs> so, John, let's think about this. The one thing that, that uh, Steve has done since he got married and had control of the checkbook oh is God. he's booked Tom on another podcast. Dude, that was, that nice. was his That was his When booking. Steve texted that the other day, <laughs> I was like, Thank you've you, got to be kidding me. Like, we that, get this text on the LockPod thread chat. No joke. It's Steve. It says, uh, hey Tom, this woman wants you to be on her pod. <laughs> he he <laughs> shouldn't have done that. On Where's the, the booking on, for us? Steve? He shouldn't have done that on the lock pod thread. I agree. That should have been a private communication. We're trying right? to get guests on the pod. So <laughs> I immediately responded. Steve has booked more people for other pods than his <laughs> yes. own pod. <laughs> Great but, work by Steve Kellogg. But I if mean, you do want to, Lindsay, how about your spiel? Since we're talking about Steve, oh my gosh, okay. yeah, you guys are chaotic. Spiel today. us, spiel, need spiel to, us. Like, Hey, there's that tip jar there still full, or the curse jar. Can we just split that? Can that be our payment? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> By the way, like when I go on these other income? shows, when I get booked on these other shows, I always mention the podcast. I did like four you did it. Yeah, or you five did. mentions the other day yeah, for LockPod. Good on, work. Done Judd's show. And like I'm like the lead singer, and sometimes the lead singer gets interviewed and the whole band's not there. And man, to Judd's you know? credit, he said, let's talk about the podcast. You guys are the jamming band, man. I've, I couldn't do it without you, but sometimes they the don't want to bring the whole together, band. Man. They have to bring the semi and everything. Oh, I'm, not, like, I'm not in any way I think I am in not in any way jealous not, that you're on. Really? Uh, not at all. Right. Not at all. He's I'm just lying. saying. I'm not. I love. I love the pod. I love you. Guys. I'm not going. What? No one's yeah, going to listen to me if I go word. on. They want to hear the local. I think. I think John disappointed. We're not angry. We're just. Disappointed. I agree. We're disappointed in you. <laughs> oh, Steve's in the chat. I'm He's just trying to it. get elected. Damn it! Yeah. Did he say? Need to be nicer Did to Steve, Steve say bonjour? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like eight hours ahead. Bon where he is. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably drunk at dinner right now. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Bonsoir. Lindsay, how come you haven't done your thing yet? What's up? Because you guys are just all over the place today. I don't know what kind Lindsay's of trying to wake coffee up. you're drinking. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I am pulled a Tom McDermott. I walked in five minutes before the show started. That's today. how I roll. No, that's you got to be 30 seconds before. To I'm, but I'm constantly I working. I have too much anxiety to do that. So. You know what time I woke up this morning so I could start studying for the show? 5.30 Look at you. Studying mm -hmm. for the show. Wow. I do. I you're study all, for the show. You're all and gussied okay. up today. Like, I when study for the show, and Kevin I and I do pre-show for an hour, hour and a half. So. Like, each show that we do, each hour, I'm probably two, two and a half hours of pr preparation for each show. For those that I mean, are watching, honestly, it's very rare to have the mayor in uh, in tie, shirt oh. and tie, but he's ready. He's today. Okay. He's all gussied up for That's his... Right. Police chief. It's a big That's conversation right. today. Aww. Yeah, it, it is. is. It is. He's trying to impress Chief Short. <laughs> I am trying to impress Chief Short. But, he's so but cute. literally, everyone watching is <laughs> waiting for the chief. So let's. Uh, yeah, let's Lindsay, why don't you go ahead and start? <laughs> John, could you grab the chief? Like we're done with you. Do you yep. You're right. listening to Left of Center, where we cover everything from politics to important events of the day in the Midwest and the nation, all while having way too much fun while doing it. If you can't. There's a bunch of stuff going on behind me. If you can't get enough of us, you can follow us on Facebook at Left of Center Podcast or on Twitter at LockPod, L-O-C-P-O-D. And if you can't listen in live, you can always download our episodes from the Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio apps. Just search Left of Center Podcast and look for a red and blue logo. And don't forget to subscribe and rate on every single one of those applications. Also, if you would like to have an ad on our show, you can send an email to Steve, S-T-E-V-E, -E, at LockPod, L-O-C-P-O-D, dot com, and we will take your money. He probably won't respond to you, but email him. <laughs> oh, Steve? Yeah. yeah. Keep in mind, is Steve in Paris right now, Chief? Oh, yeah, I'm with you, yeah. Yeah, he I know. Paris? He's suddenly become very wealthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Scoot right up there, uh, yeah. Chief, if you can. Right yeah. up to the table. Give us a little bit of time, Chief. we got to get through. we, we got to pay some it. bills. We're going to pay some bills, and then we'll get be comfortable. we got Chief Andy Short in studio There's right now. Get that so. stomach There's all the way on the edge of the table. All right, so here we go. The man with Welcome the to Season 4, Episode 16. That's what you've been listening to now. Uh, we have been sponsored in Season 4. 
by Powering America, Whoa. our premier sponsor. Season four is powered by our, our premier sponsor, Powering America. With the explosive growth of renewable energy in America today, call Powering America to meet your needs for renewable energy in your home or office, including electric vehicle charges and solar power solutions. Trust the electrical professionals of Powering America. That's right. Visit poweringnorthwestindiana.org. That's poweringnorthwestindiana.org. Try Electronics wants to be your complete communications provider. Try Electronics has been a leader in this industry for more than 55 years. They're dedicated to assisting their clients with their systems integration needs. They have the expertise and experience to provide superior results for a wide variety of projects. For more information, call Try Electronics today at 800 722 6793. That's Try Electronics. I was talking to Tom and uh, one of the owners of Try the other day. And I told them our job is to get a jingle for him. Ah, so we got to get up for it. Oh no, they were very interested. Eli, Eli, <laughs> this is not this is not easy. We give Eli tough, tough, you tough know, assignments. This is a tough assignment. Try electronics. electronics needs a jingle. We need a jingle. Eli. All right, and we'll buy it for two hundred dollars, <laughs> just in case it goes big. <laughs> <laughs> Grizzolius Concrete. Grizzolius Concrete was voted number one in the Times Best of the Region in 2020 and in 2021. Grizzolius Concrete specializes in all of your concrete projects, and they have been using the original cement finish in the California style since 1972 and also offers stamped and colored concrete. For more information or a project quote, call Grizzolius Concrete at 219-659-4127. At Midwest Air Duct Cleaning, your health is our number one priority. They're dedicated to providing top-notch quality services at an affordable price. Their technicians have been trained to shelter the members of your household from potential airborne contaminants. If you'd like more information on how to protect the lungs of your home, call Marinko and his team at 219-671-8868 today. All right, Calumet Brewery. Calumet Brewery wants to tell you about Michelob Ultra. Michelob Ultra is a superior light beer with only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories, all while being one of the fastest growing brands in the region. Or you can try Ultra Pure Gold, an organic light lager with only 2.5 carbs and 85 calories, brewed for your healthy lifestyle. Enter to win a Michelob Ultra golf bag through calbrew.com. That's C-A-L-B-R-E-W.com. Check out Calumet Brewery's Facebook page for details. Tortillas Nueva Leon is the gold standard of Mexican cuisine throughout the Midwest. Look for Tortillas Nueva Leon's, whoa. Look for Tortilla Nueva Leon's popular red and white label, at your local grocery store and enjoy quality Mexican products made with local expertise. Tortillas Nuevo León, hechas con amor, para ti y tu familia de todo corazón. Cheap Tortillas like Nuevo León, hechas con amor, para ti y tu familia, yeah. de todo corazón. The voice of Eli. Challenger Learning Center. Celebrate Halloween this year at Challenger's Fright Night Laser Spectacular on Saturday, October 30th. Showtimes are 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. Tickets are $12 and must be purchased in advance. To learn more about Challenger Center and their upcoming events, visit clcnwi.com. That's clcnwi.com. Or connect on social media at Challenger NWI on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Chief. Sorry, Kevin. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Finish up. This is the last one, right? Uh, no, two, we had two, two more. more. Oh, my. Almost there. We we're, going through, we're going through all of them. All of them at once. Go, we can go, go right go. to Chief Short. Thank you, John. Misprint specializes in delivering the highest quality signs and printing on time and within budget. Misprint's experience and technology allows them to offer custom, commercial, on-demand printing and sign solutions you can count on. Rick Baltzenberger and his team have served Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana for over 30 years. They have two convenient locations in Munster and Hammond. Misprint Printing. I remember trying to pay bills and Vesmer was like, I know. Uh, don't read those. Uh, uh, Chief, hold on. I'm like, hey, man, we're trying to pay some bills here. Vesmer. There's something going on in the Trying chat. to get you a paycheck. Right. We're, we're trying to pay your you know, high salary, Vesmer. Shit. For all this high technology <laughs> that you've ordered us. <laughs> Byway Brewery. Byway Brewing is a family friendly. Uh, yes. Byway Brewing is a family friendly microbrewery with a spacious tap room and outside patio. Brewing equipment offers a unique backdrop for your private event, like weddings, reunions, and corporate parties. We are conveniently located just off of 8094 at the Kennedy Avenue South Exit. Come on by and enjoy Byway's award-winning <laughs> beers and unbeatable menu. All now right. you could go, Vesmar. Okay. Yeah, what do you need? Chief. Yes. There's something going on. you got to get, so get that. The mic's on an arm. You can yeah. put you it can right, right up. Pull it right up. as an example. Like See, how, See? I like. And it goes up and down. Move it all around. Yeah. yeah, up yeah. and down. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Here's so what's going on here. in the chat. 
Eva said she's patiently waiting for you to get right up into the mic and say good morning. In that very white uh, voice of yours. Good morning, Eva. Uh, Whoa. Uh, God damn. Well, well, I wonder if she likes it. Something just happened in Robert's <laughs> like, Wait, wait. Can you do that again? <laughs> yeah. one, one more time. Whoa. Like a personal good morning. Not Come even on, like. Get into it. Get into it. Good morning, Eva. Oh. oh. That's a guy I want to pull uh, me over. I'm just, can, I, can I just walk out of the studio? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Lockpot, Chief. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you, man. Right. You know, we've had, uh, Jeff Long was in here and didn't even know. He goes, <laughs> what did he do when he came in? He said, uh, L-O-C-P. L-O-C-P-O-D. He us, uh, yeah. And we're like, you obviously listen a lot, right? So. <laughs> We're glad you're here, Chief. We appreciate you. Thanks. Thank how, you. Long, how long have you been Chief now? Uh, I just finished up 33 in uh, September 28th. 33 years, but what about how long is Chief? Uh, Chief since uh, it's been uh, 10 months now. All right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. I mean, it's been, you took, so I, I was trying to remember. We had one thing about me as mayor. I've only had, Andy's only my third Chief. In 18 which years. Is uncommon, right? I mean, you know your fellow Chiefs in Indiana, right? Right, right. But you also, uh, your father was the one that hired me. No way. Yeah, I knew yeah, that, actually. Yeah. I'm glad you said that, though. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you came on in what year? Uh, 88. 88. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, that was when my dad was mayor, for sure. <laughs> that. Mm -hmm. He came on when I was, when I had just joined the Navy, when you joined. So we both joined something big, which means we're obviously pretty close in age. I never even really... No, I think I got you by several years. <laughs> really? He just so looks like he's he just so looks Andy. like he's younger than you. So Andy, what did you do? So you worked for a while after high school, then? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, did you work school, in a park department or after something? After like high that? school, I went to a, a junior college, and then I went to a school down in Mississippi, and then from there, I uh, worked for the parks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then so, so were, and then what made you decide to be a police officer? He, oh, uh, there was a lot of guys that used to come in our neighborhood who was just uh, some awesome guys, and they would uh, like who are they still around? Uh, Paul Walker. Paul Walker. See, uh, I love Paul Walker. Ronnie so Rowe. Oh, uh, Ronnie Rowe. Bruce Parisho. All of those guys just come in, and it was pretty good with us. So, did they like recruit you, like a guy like Paul Walker and all these other like mentors you're talking about? Did they like recruit you as a young man to be? Paul a Walker was always on us. Really? Yeah. Like yeah. you he should was, be a cop. You should be a right, police officer. Said, you, ought to, you ought to think about it. You know, if you're not going to finish college, at least try to become on the Hammond Police Department, where you can uh, further your career and mm -hmm. make something of yourself. And I mean, look at you now, uh, mm -hmm. Hammond's first African American police chief. So you made history in Hammond. And you're making a damn good living. I mean, I know how much you get paid. It's a it's a really good job. Well, it's good to be chief. It is. <laughs> no, it is. But it's bad to be chief too. It's bad to be chief too, yeah, though, right? Because yeah, yeah, you so get yeah. the phone calls. Like we had a rough week last week. Yes, we did. I know it's not your fault. It's not my fault. But like people don't understand that, right? Right. That is correct. But you know, uh, I signed up for this, and, and I love doing it. I mean, um, I, I hate that we had the uh, homicides, but I do love the fact that God, that's the worst, isn't it? Uh, yes, but I do love the fact that I'm still out there trying to make some type of change for everybody by just being out there. I think it helps uh, the young guys to see me out there. So, you know, you mentioned, Chief, uh, Paul Walker and other African-American police officers back in the day kind of recruited you. Do you kind of continue that tradition on and try to get into the African-American community or the minority communities in Hammond and elsewhere to get young men of color to come out of the police department? Men and women. Yeah, absolutely, men and women. And it's Sorry, it's funny that you ask that because uh, I have asked several pastors to, uh, to assist me in regards to uh, looking for uh, different uh, minorities to come on our department because uh, I think that in the um, – Churches, that's a great recruiting class. Right I agree now. with you. Mm -hmm. But what, what is the hesitation? Because, I mean, being a police officer, is a, what, our, our junior officers with overtime are making 60. Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, right? A little bit more. I agree. Yeah. One of the problems we have in the city is sometimes the junior officers definitely pass up the chief, but sometimes they pass up the mayor because they have high salaries and they're making a lot of overtime, and then uh, they end up making more than the and mayor. second which, jobs. And, yeah. and Well, I'm talking even just the, what we pay them in the city. Yes. And then we're like, yes. what the hell? Officer so-and-so made 140 <laughs> grand last year, and the mayor doesn't even make that himself, right? right. So like, which I'm not very cool with, usually. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, we, have so, we have so many different grants that's out there for them to make the money. I mean, no, yeah. I agree. Oh, traffic grants. So if I'm a brand-new officer... And I want to like, I take everything that comes at me. How much can I make? Oh, you probably can make about 75 easy. That's, That's great. great. And, Mayor, brand new. and then obviously, if I'm an officer with like 20 years and I'm taking everything that's coming at me, I, I'm making six figures easy, right? Yeah, easy, yeah. Oh, yeah. You so know, Mayor, one, wow. one I, was, I was one of those guys. I know. There yeah. you go. <laughs> know. Andy, that's how one of the things you preached a lot lately, Mayor, is making sure that your police force looks like your community. I always talk about it. And we've done a better job in the police department than we have in fire. And I'm not trying to diss on fire. I love I love the fire department. I know the chief's working hard at it. But we've been way more successful in the police department 
you know, diversifying. Because right. when I took over, you know, in 2004, Andy, mm-hmm. the Hammond Police Department looked a lot different than it does right now, right? I believe we had, I want to say probably about eight, and I think we have about, what, 14 now? And you're just talking with African Americans. Yes. But, like, now, not only that, we have a lot more women working yeah. for us now. We have a lot more Hispanics working yes, for we us do. now. Yes, we we do. have a lot more LGBT working for us yes, now. Yes, we do. And yes. in that regard, I think. We have an Asian, a great guy. Yeah, of course, yeah. Awesome yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. So, so like you said, Mayor, being reflective of the community, I think it not not only is it good for just the administration, it's also good for the city it is. and the and the members of the and just especially, residents to see their police department the police. look like the community. especially in police. Yeah. Because if we're going to be making tough arrests, which every arrest nowadays is tough because everybody's got a cell phone and mm-hmm. it's a controversial no matter what we do, even if we're one hundred percent right, it, you want to have a department that looks like the community, right? Yes, this is true. I also like the fact that we. Uh, we have a lot of guys that uh, got their schooling from the Hammond school system. That's on our department also. Yeah. I think it, it makes a great difference. Too. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't have to train them about the streets and neighborhoods, stuff like that. Yeah, we this know is it, true. Right? This is true. You so, know, guys, one of the um, big issues as I look back on Chief Short and the mayor, and I think you guys in a certain situation, the one thing that comes to my mind is what happened after George Floyd and how uh, we had a Black Lives Matter protest that came into Hammond. Uh, th- four days before my election. If I my remember, it was like election. May 1st, 2020. And it was hot, right? It started yes. up. Andy and I, we were both at the police department when it was a protest in front of the police department. When it was a protest, yes, we were. And it was totally peaceful, right? Yes, it was. There was no sign that it was going to turn, like, potentially destructive. It was very peaceful. Very right. peaceful. Mm-hmm. We were watching it the whole time. Yes, we and were. And we weren't, and we made a conscious decision that... The officers were not going to engage the protesters at all. They had free reign. They were on Russell Street, which is right in front of the police department. We just shut it down. I'm like, go ahead. And there was a few hundred, oh, a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. And they wanted to be heard, and we let mm-hmm. them, and we heard them. They were at, we the, so they're in front of the police department for two hours, probably right. Easily, yes, yes, yes. So after, and it was apparently peaceful. Mm-hmm. So Kevin and I had other hit, hits to make that campaign stops. I was literally four days before my primary election, running for Congress, and the polls were open for early voting. So we bounce. Kevin and I bounce, and we start heading around, and I'm getting updates from Andy the whole time. Andy's not cheap yet, but Andy's giving me updates. Uh, the chief at the time, John Doty, was giving me updates. Yes, yes. So they, then the crowd starts marching, right? Started marching. And that wasn't planned. No, it wasn't. But it was they still a peaceful march. Agree, but they didn't have permits. So no, no. we have our decision is try to stop them. Of course not, because we're not going to provoke anything, right? That's true. So we let them march and shut down streets, basically a roving, a, a roving protest. roving roadblock. Right, a mm-hmm. roving roadblock. Mm-hmm. And they're going down streets that are busy, and yes. they're going like Calumet is a state highway. This is true. And we're literally letting them go. <laughs> they go in front of City Hall, and I'm getting updated. And then, you know, when they're in front of City Hall, then I start getting a lot more panicky phone calls from the officers at the scene. This is true. Because they start hearing that the crowd is not satisfied with just staying at City Hall, right, Chief? This is true. We, cu- we started getting intelligence that they was uh, planning on um, – st- they wanted to stop the traffic on 8094. Now think about that. For those that are, aren't familiar with our area, I-8094 is probably <coughs> one of the busiest highways in the country. It's the – Busiest stretch, I believe. Yeah, it's where I-80 and I-94 are both the same road. It's Just below Lake Michigan. So any east-west that was blocked by the Great Lakes comes to the closest point, which is Hammond. Yep. And it literally – shutting down 8094 – is dangerous. Tens of thousands of cars a day. Yeah, tens of thousands. And Probably you, hundreds of thousands. And if you, recall, if and, you recall in Oklahoma, then somebody, gave, uh, there was a peaceful march out in the middle of the street and some semi-truck ran through the, uh, yep. Yep. Through the crowd. Yeah. Right. We, could not, we couldn't let that happen. So... You know, the crowd starts marching south of City Hall, and they have probably two miles, a mile and a half to 8094. About a mile and a half. Mile and a half. And we were in Hobart. So Kevin and I are like, you guys got to come back. Like, this is getting ugly because the state police, there's no way the state police is letting this group on to 8094. And we have a standoff. Basically, where the state police and Lake County Sheriff and the Hammond Police and a lot of agencies. First and Calumet. Yeah, right. And right. the state police had the uh, exits blocked. In fact, we had to Dude, get around the crowd. The there's no way to get in. There's yes. no way the crowd, the state police let us in because of, you were we, the mayor. Right. right. So there's no way the crowd is going to get to 8094. It was going to be a, a fight before that happened. And I think the protesters were ready to fight mm-hmm. and the, the cops were dug in and in their gear. Yes. And that's when Kevin and I got there. Yes. Right? And it was it as was a, tense as anything I've ever seen, Chief. Have you seen anything like that in Hammond since you've been a police no, officer? No, not in Hammond. No, no, no. As a police officer? No, no, no. It was literally like, I thought there was going to be a huge There fight. was like a standoff. It was. It, yeah. w- it was. And, uh, oh, man, they were saying some things out there that was, <sighs> ooh, it was ugly. 
Well, you know, dude, you how, I mean, are you getting special attention being African American police officer? Are they people because the, the the protesters were? It was a very diverse group. It wasn't all African American, but I know that some of our African American officers and Hispanic officers were getting special attention from the protesters like hey you're on the wrong team kind of stuff that yeah, was me he was right behind me remember? yeah i was right behind you <laughs> it was a rough day for you Chief. really yes. well i mean so they're being mean to you obviously Same yeah thing. yeah but i but i i i understood i understood uh, uh what they was asking for and and they wanted to be heard and so uh my take on it was just hey listen to it i took all of it you did i took all of it but by the then, way chief and then once they got done talking they didn't have no, nothing else to say but by the way chief george floyd got murdered I mean, yes. I believe that. Yes. So, right. So, like, I mean, we're on the same team as far as what the protests were about. And in Hammond, I think we've done a good job as police officers trying to work. With, and we've made mistakes. Yes. Well, I've been mayor. We've made mistakes. And <laughs> we've learned from them, right? Yes. And we're trying to work better. And we're trying to diversify our force. And we're trying to do the things that, that the neighborhood is asking us to do, right? That's true. So, like, I felt like we were being picked on during that George Floyd protest for political reasons. That I always felt Well, and by like, the way, I thought, and I felt this, because I, I wandered out in the crowd a little bit as well, and the Hammond residents that were there were very supportive of the police, I thought. You know, there was a lot of Hammond people that were on the sidewalk right. saying like, hey, you know, we're it was, here. It was we, a shit show. Man. Yep, it was rough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I remember you were, you were assigned to watch the mayor, and the mayor's out in the crowd <laughs> trying to calm yes. the crowd, which, by the way, Mayor, Congratulations again. I mean, you did an unbelievable job out there that day because you dispersed the crowd eventually. I think they he tried. listened to the crowd. Yeah, that yeah. was something different that I thought that uh, both sides wasn't doing. He allowed uh, the protesters to talk, and he listened to the crowd. And I think that come to, that helped us out probably one hundred percent. Chief, they weren't being nice to me. Oh, I know. They were I was, telling me, I was but you, you were taking it, Mayor. Yeah. Dude, what am I going to do? I agree. I was like, literally, if I would have taken a different tact, I would have been beaten down. There's no doubt in my mind. There was a couple people I thought, literally, here it comes. I'm going to get punched right in the face. I swear. I was thinking that the whole time. I was, like, like stealing myself, ready to get hit. And then nothing happened. And I was talking to a guy that would have mm -hmm. rip, ripped me apart. Yes, he true. was a mean-looking dude. He was pissed off. He was frustrated. And this guy helped me so much because I was like, he's like, what was do you want us pastor? to do? pastor? No, there was a pastor oh. I was working with also. Mm -hmm. the, Did pastor, you? the pastor was a little thinner guy. Yeah, yeah, but this guy was. Yeah, he was beast. Yeah, and he was like a natural leader, though. Like, mm -hmm. people were listening to him, and he's like, what are we supposed to do? And right. I, Because he didn't want to walk backwards. Right. That was a big point for him. It looks like they had to retreat, right? And I'm like, if you go here and you go there, you can get out of here. Mm -hmm. And I swear, when he took the group with him, I was like, <gasps> like, I'll never forget it as long as I live, Chief. I was like, I cannot believe they were listening. I can't believe they actually did this because I thought for sure we're going to have just a huge fight, you know? It was something that day. And, I mean, Chief – so you have an interesting perspective, right? You're an African-American police officer, and the protesters are basically protesting um, police shootings and killings of African-American men. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you kind of feel that you still are a member of the community, right, but you're also a sworn officer? How do you deal with that kind of dichotomy? As I am a policeman, I, I see some of the things that – I hear some of the things that everybody, the protesters are speaking of. But when you're talking about the community, this is my community. This whole city of Hammond is my community, and I feel that they, they're going to back us. They're going to back me. They're going to back you. And I feel that, hey, by seeing a lot of us up there trying to do the right thing, I think the, uh, the citizens of Hammond is going to always stand behind us. Mm -hmm. I, truly I agree with that. you, Chief. I, I think that. in that day, I don't think there was a lot of Hammond citizens that were leading that group to 1894. I agree with you. Okay. It was a lot of outside influence I, i've seen a lot i've seen uh, there are some people that said some things to me that i i, I knew who that they you were. knew they were really? yeah yeah but i understood because those are the ones that's uh just followed the group that sucks man but it, it was okay because i understood it but you know what chief that sounds like politics to me it's like sometimes i see people that i've been good to that are not nice in return and when i really need their help they totally screw me and it's it's like it's it takes a while to like get used to that and, I mean, I'm sure you see it all the time as a police officer. People, you think that, you know, hey, man, we, we've known each other for 30, 40 years, and now you're acting like this toward me, right? Yeah, right. But, but it's also funny, though. Those are the same ones that want to give me water on a hot day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, and, I, and I, I just try to be neutral and try to do the right thing. Well, I tell you, you're one of the most solid guys I know, Chief. That's why you're the chief. I mean, you're, like, steady, you know, even under pressure. You're steady. You're the same guy, like, even when the shit's on the line. What you, you said, know? you told me one time, um, it's not the uh, – it's not a handout. It's all about equality. And oh, I yeah. Thank you for that. Oh, no, dude. You're, you know, you're not a police chief because you're African-American, Andy. You're a police chief because you're excellent. 
Okay. Appreciate and you're also African American, you know. Okay. Thank but you. you're excellent. That's mm -hmm. why you're there. The, you, you know, it's 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 wonderful for Hammond. And I know you're inspiration for a lot of our residents, and and me included, by the way. But like, there's a lot of young men and women out there that look at you and say, "Man, that's freaking awesome! I could be a police chief." And maybe they wouldn't have thought that two years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. That's, that's what it's why. All about. That's why I'm so proud of you, and I'm so lucky to have you working with me. I, it's awesome, guys. If we don't, if you don't mind, let's to let's uh, like fast forward from. 2020 to like 2021 and yeah. we've got this crazy issue going on right in now in chicago with mayor lightfoot and the chicago fop do you mind talking about this chief uh, uh, let's go ahead you want to set the stage a little sure. bit sure so back in august uh mayor lightfoot in chicago said to uh her employees thirty thousand of them in chicago that she was going to require uh, a vaccine uh for them by october 15th that's aggressive right i mean yeah it's a aggressive, vaccine right? mandate <clears throat> vaccine mandate for all for employees. employees now private industry has done that some governments have done that and she said this is this is the date um she got some pushback especially from certain departments most the police and fire department didn't they say that most of the employees fell in line regular employees. yeah i mean they had many departments like that were 100 percent 90 percent 98 percent you know here and there and so, so the pushback comes from and this is no surprise to me as mayor a lot of the pushback we get is from police officers and firefighters and i'm not trying to talk negatively it's just a fact and it's, so an important you run into stronger willed people in those departments is that safe this is true and so an important fact that happened then when there was pushback they started some negotiations and um, the mayor then said, okay, listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a portal up. All you have to do is report your vaccine status. Right. So you don't have to be vaccined. If you're not vaccined, you have to do testing twice a week. Right. And then Which is consistent everybody... With, that's consistent right. with how a company is across America. Without a doubt. Doing, right? Without a doubt. It's like, if you don't want to get the shot, we're not going to tell you. And these are, these are folks that have, that have um, a lot of interaction with the public. Right. Isn't that the law of the land right now? I think it was in 1905. I think it was Jacobson versus Massachusetts. I, I, wow, look at you being uh, a lawyer today. No, no. <laughs> I'm going to give you my bar card. So are but you the, talking about but, just the immunizations in the, themselves? Yeah, and, uh, and I think it was the, uh, uh, what the Lord of Lamb uh, was, has pretty much stated that they could, uh, it can be mandated. For public health. Because right. of smallpox, right? Right, right. Okay, exactly. I thought so. so it's she, not, it's, I don't it think, is all right. Yes. No, I don't think it's a question whether or not it's legal. In fact, that's why Mayor Lightfoot's being so cocky on this issue. She's I think like, so. You want to go to court? Let's go to court. And they dug she in. She knows. Like, honestly, like, if if government can't force a COVID shot, then government can't force a smallpox or a measles or a mumps or rubella. Like, then basically all of us could start carrying disease again. Right. You know? So, like, legally, I don't think they have a leg where, to stand Where do on. you see it, though, kind of from an administration standpoint, Listen, Mayor? Listen. I'm not a humongous fan of Mayor Lightfoot. Her and I have had run-ins, okay? Yeah. And in fact, she hasn't really cooperated with us PD-wise, right, yeah. Chief? Yeah. Well, like, yeah. we're neighbors, and we really don't act very neighborly with each other, okay? So I'm, you're not talking to a, a huge with Mayor Lightfoot cameras. fan. Cameras. Yeah, right. Camera, with the cameras, right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm not a huge fan, but she's dead right on this issue. She's 100% right on the FOP issue and the vaccination issue because of this. The Chicago residents voted her mayor. And as voting her mayor, you placed her in charge of the police department, her and the police chief and the police commission in Chicago. And if we don't have the, the chain of command working, like we're like, no, mayor, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. It's like anarchy. Well, like, I mean, can you imagine that, chief? Like, I, I, don't, I don't get that. Actually, I can't, I can't because of the fact that we have a good working relationship. That's, with an, that's another thing is our relationship, chief and, you know, mayor, of no, course. They don't but have like a good police, one. Police right, right. and mayor's office is a good relationship. Right, and we don't, we don't uh, settle our stuff in, in, on the streets. We settle it in your office mm. at the big, well, long Very true. Table. Well, the other very thing true. I think that's a dangerous <laughs> precedent, a dangerous precedent is, you know, we, we, at least I, think of police officers as they follow the rules. Right, they enforce the rules, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, like, you know, I'm gonna get pulled. I get pulled over. They say, "Put your hands behind your back." Why do I gotta listen to you? You won't even listen to an order from the mayor. The mayor, and you know, you're I not was... following the rules. Why right. do I gotta follow your rules? So you're gonna steal my thunder? Huh? No, man, <laughs> no. I don't. I never want to steal Andy's thunder. Because <laughs> I thought that's what we. Uh, when I talked right. to you, I was telling you about my son. Because that's how he feels. Go my, ahead. My 20 year old, 22 year old. He feels that hey, if you can't follow. Uh, the law, how do you expect me to follow it? That's Interesting. Right. No, I didn't know he said that. Right, and, and that's how he feels. And, okay. and he also feels that, hey, on the streets, we cannot be, uh, 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 we can't let the street be unsafe. Somebody, right. uh, we cannot ask our guys to come off the street. If I was to ask the, the men and women of the Hamlet Police Department to, to take uh, a whole day off, 
it's going to hurt our it's going to hurt our city. You couldn't do it. Department. I mean, you can't can't, I can't do, do it. it. I can't, can't do, do it. it. And that's what's that's but, what's crazy. But if you hold in court on this, it's not right to hold court on the street. Mm -hmm. It should be at the uh, uh, in, in courts. And then you've got uh, the head of the Chicago FOP, yeah. right, John Contanzara. The head of who, the Chicago Police Union. Yeah, for those and who, who thinks he's in charge of the police department. It sounds like it. He's basically encouraging them to ignore a mayor's order. Yep. And this means, a, I mean, that's a, like, you know, the FOP in the city of Hammond, we have a, a good relationship. Great relationship. I mean, it's not perfect. We Sometimes we argue, sometimes mm -hmm. we fight. But for the most part, I think the leadership of the FOP is very Looking for the same exact things we are, yes, they right? Are. I can't imagine how dysfunctional this relationship is. I can't imagine Mike Elkman, the president of the Hammond FOP, out there like just constantly banging on me personally, how I run the city. It would be – that is incredibly dysfunctional. The one thing about this guy, Condon Zara, that I, I found out is that, he, number one, he was okay with having federal troops come in at the invitation of Donald Trump to Chicago. Right. Two, he made some really strange comments about January 6th. He said – I didn't see any fireworks. I didn't see any guns. I just saw people trying to push past the police to get into a building. That right, was crazy. Right. So, I mean, that's kind of the perspective this guy's coming from. And I think that's maybe maybe part of the backstory is that he and Mayor Lightfoot have something going on. See, so Mayor, uh, Mr. Kentanzara predicted that the Chicago police officers wouldn't report to work because of the policy. He said that if a large number of police officers refuse to submit to testing or reporting their vaccination status to the city, it's safe to say the city of Chicago will have a police force at 50% or less for this weekend coming up. He said, hold the line. That's hold the line. Whatever happens because of manpower issues, that falls at the mayor's doorstep, he added. That's a threat. John, you got a wow. clip That's him? a threat. Yeah, let me play the short audio clip here. John Cotanzara begins to release videos on YouTube. I am telling every member, do not, do not fill out the portal information on your vaccine right now. You Instructing. I mean, that's pretty, that's not like gray. That's black and white. So let's, let's say this happens to us, Chief. I was talking to Kevin yesterday about how... I would approach an issue like this. So I would assume that the chief and the assistant chief and the captains, that's the administration, I would assume they would all get their vaccination status if this were a similar situation. I would start as mayor. It's like, okay, we got a problem. We got a, they said it was 35% of the police force yeah. is blowing off the mayor's order and they're not complying. I would start with the highest paid, the highest rank. Let's say it's captain so-and-so. I'd say, I want captain so-and-so in my office. And they come in, I say, Captain so-and-so, I see you didn't download your stuff to the portal. And they say, that's right, Mayor. I, I believe it's my right not to get this shot. And I'm like, I, I respect your rights. Uh, you're fired. You have a Board of Public Works here. And on Thursday, leave your shit here and get the fuck out of my office. Seriously. Cool. I'd be like, you got to go. You're out. And then I would probably meet with a couple of lieutenants that first day. And then I'd let it wait for a couple of days. And then I would say, let's see what happens now, right? And then I imagine more people would start getting their shot. And if they didn't, I'd say, okay, I want to talk to Lieutenant so-and-so. Lieutenant so-and-so, I see you haven't followed our orders. I want you to leave your shit in here and get the hell out of the office. You're wow. fired. I'll see you on Thursday. And I think eventually you're either going to filter out the head cases or eventually everybody's going to comply with the mayor's order. And by the way, I think the mayor's toast. She's not going to get reelected. No. She's hated in Chicago. But the fact is you cannot have the third largest city in America the police department of that city at war with the mayor. It's just completely dysfunctional. You got to give her the keys because the residents of Chicago voted for her and then vote her out in and, a year and a half. And so, Mayor, for, for me, what you're saying and I'm is sorry it's, a chain if that of command, it's a chain of command. Dude, issue. you cannot have total dysfunctionality. It's not good for anybody that lives anywhere near Chicago, right? So now they're talking about huge gaps in the covering. So Mayor of Chicago is like, hey, I got an idea. Let's go to the Illinois State Police. Well, the Illinois State Police just came back and said, nope. We are not, oh, excuse me, the Illinois sheriffs won't fill police gaps stemming from Chicago's vaccine mandate. Wow. So, so they're, they're going to have like 35% fewer officers on the streets of Chicago, you know? Sounds like some overtime opportunities. Well, I think we can make it work. <laughs> but is that brutal? I'm sorry if oh, it's brutal, it. but like I just never could imagine a situation like this where the police are like openly revolting against the mayor. That would just be totally dysfunctional. I'm vaccinated, and I hope each and every one of our officers uh, uh, get vaccinated. It, uh, uh, it's their right. They should. They should want it for all the right reasons. Those that haven't gotten vaccinated yet, I, my question is: What are you waiting for, guys? Please get vaccinated. What's the number? Right? We heard this. Uh, I don't and, know what. John, you got that clip from Mayor Lightfoot. This is a. This is an interesting fact yeah, that she brings check up. This out. <clears throat> By the way, yeah, this is one of her responses to. Uh, She's what's not his backing name? down. Uh, Contanzara. Yep. Yeah. There we go. 
number one cause of death in 2020 of law enforcement was COVID-19, nothing else. It's foolish, foolish, but unfortunately that's in keeping with the leadership of this fraternal order of police. Wow. They will yeah. be vaccinated. She so normally before 2020, the leading cause of death for police officers would probably be car crashes, if I had to guess. Yes. yes. And then I imagine death by gun, either suicide. suicide. Mm -hmm. And then I imagine police shootings, probably third at that point, right? Pretty. It's up there. Okay. So now, because of COVID, it's taken the top spot. And the number one killer of police officers across the country right now is COVID-19. And we have, I don't know, let's say 50% of our, our officers haven't been, you know, received the vaccine. Is that Hopefully fair? Hopefully less. I think it's probably in that area. I don't know. I'm, I think it's close to that area. Right. And don't we, forget, we, we lost, we lost yeah. a, a we lost officer. Officer, officer Tom Sawyer. Sawyer. Yeah. Tom Sawyer. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. He was COVID. sergeant? Yes, he was. Yeah. Good, and he, good, good guy. Yeah, he was like my good, age. Yeah. A good God-fearing man. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he died from COVID. Yes. And so he it, died in the line of duty, yes. which is the only officer since I've been mayor that's died in the line of duty. Knock on wood. We don't want any more of those. By the no. way, I am the worst jinx ever. So don't say that, Mayor. I was with Andy and French Lick. There you go. I yes. was with Andy and French Lick about... Stay safe. Stay safe out there. <laughs> about what, two, three weeks ago, Andy? Yes. And I'm like, Chief, we're having the best year. <laughs> and, and he's like, shut up. <laughs> Don't say that. And I'm like, no, I mean, seriously, we were having the best year. There's very low violent crime. Well, there you go. I jinxed us. Because yeah. we've had a horrible couple of weeks in the city of Hammond. Yes. And it was my fault. And But it's just very sad what's going on in Chicago. It scares me because we're so dysfunctional. And then... To add insult to injury. Oh, it's Senator Braun. Right. To add insult to injury, yesterday, Indiana's <laughs> other U.S. senator, besides the one I'm normally banging on, Mike Braun, <laughs> is out there saying, this is what he said, Indiana's police departments are hiring now and will welcome you with the respect you deserve, Braun said. What Our a, police... Uh, what a jackass. Yeah. Our police do the hardest job in the world and they deserve respect, not losing their pay or being fired for refusing to comply with the ridiculous vaccine mandate, he said. Now, listen, I understand there's some people out there that feel that the vaccine mandate is ridiculous. OK, I don't I hope we don't get to that point. Personally, I wouldn't want to see that in Hammond. I wouldn't want to see that in Indiana. OK, but in Illinois, this is what they have and this is what they did. And I, don't, I just think the job of U.S. Senator we're in a pandemic. I think most people could agree to that. Mm -hmm. And to have a U.S. senator like criticizing, you know, vaccine mandates and encouraging people not to get the shot. And encouraging then encouraging police to leave. Encouraging unvaccinated people to move to Munster. <laughs> like the Munster police chief is out there. And I looked at the stats. Munster's got like above 75 percent vaccination. One of the highest vaccinated towns. Can in you this, believe that? The in, whole in city. The Munster has like 75 percent or above vaccinated people, which wow. is incredible. Wow. Awesome. Wow. And then you have your police chief out there saying unvaccinated people move to Munster. Yep. Come and cough on us, please. Come to right? our schools. Right. Come and cough on us and have your kids cough and. Like, why don't we encourage vaccinated people to move to the regions, sure. right? <laughs> like, I don't get that. Like, yeah, you're unvaccinated. Well, that, come on and, in. And you're also encouraging people that don't want to follow orders. Uh, yeah, by the way. Here, come on over. You want to be a troublemaker? We'll take you. I agree, oh. though, Chief. Wow, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. If you're like, uh, you're uh, being a police officer is a great job. You're making good money. you got a great pension. You, know, you retire after 20 years. You could retire after 20 years. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to throw all that away over a, a, shot, a shot during a pandemic... If you're that rigid, I don't really want you in the Hammond Police Department. I'll be honest with you, because I imagine you're going to be a pain in my ass a couple years down the road also. And you're going to be a pain in the chief's ass a couple years down the road also. So I don't know who Senator Braun's hiring. I didn't realize Senator Braun had a police force. <laughs> but I tell you what, this mayor is not interested in the head cases from Chicago coming to the Hammond Police you Department. Sure as hell not interested in having Senator Braun tell you what to do. And I know we're hiring a couple of Chicago police <laughs> officers right now before, also. This, will this be is before. way before all this. <laughs> They're the so, vaccinated ones. So to our new Chicago police officers, welcome to the Hammond Police <laughs> Department. But, but uh, I don't want the head cases from Chicago that are willing to throw their career away over a political issue. I just don't want that. Yeah, I think it's interesting that like it was about 35%, which is the number you usually hear about the always Trump folks and 35 percent i'm just curious about the demographics of those 35 percent i could take a guess there mm. what? a bunch of white guys yeah my guess white male yep <laughs> trump. my guess if you did political uh, support 90 percent plus would be trump voters i think so i think so did john go to sleep over there maybe they're just concerned about the <laughs> vaccine man. they could be there's I another that's what i'm saying i don't think it's all this all, is all white guys leaning in awfully hard the last one minute here on these dudes things. i don't know man <laughs> All right, let's go to chat. I bet you, yeah. I bet you, some of the people that are refusing to get the shot have like 
full sleeve tattoos, stuff like that. Well, I and they don't, they don't care about the stuff that's inside. against full sleeve tattoos. What I'm guys. saying <laughs> is, I might have, have a, one. What you're saying is, Kevin, <laughs> if I have a full sleeve tattoo, I'm not saying it because of that. I'm saying if you have a full sleeve tattoo, you don't think about what's in the ink that they put Good on point. your skin. You know what? I didn't know where you're going. I'm not saying yeah. because of that. I know a lot of people with tattoos. Yeah. Okay. But you don't talk about I'm the one. the ink that's going to go on your arm and be there for the rest of your life. Just be consistent. There like, you go. If you're going to be like that. That's if, a real good point. That's what I'm saying. I, I Believe me, my daughter has tattoos. Yeah. I know plenty of friends of mine that has tattoos. It it's not about that. I have zero tattoos. I have zero tattoos <laughs> myself. Zero. Okay? But what I'm saying is you see somebody with a full sleeve tattoo, they're like, I don't know what's in that shot. It's like, get the hell out of here. That's full. a hell of a good point. Right? You got a freaking ink on your arm permanently. And did you analyze the ink that they put into your arm? No, you didn't. Right? It's organic. Right? It's all organic. <laughs> sure it's organic. Is. Those are clean needles. Just be consistent. That's all I'm saying. Okay? Like, that's great, Mayor. I like it. Well, yeah. I love my guys, my guys and girls in the Hammond Police Department. I think they're doing a great job. And you I have, also you feel have a great that force. They are, a, they're there for us, and they love the city. Yeah. They're working hard for the city. Chief, they do. Chief, there's a great uh, thing on the chat that said, do you karaoke? Because they want you to do a Barry White song. Whoa. <laughs> Is that Steve Kellogg? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's in France. <laughs> he's in France. <laughs> I'm spending our money. <laughs> spending our money. Well, Chief, it was awesome having you on, man. Hey, man, we got to do this again. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You'll be our me. expert on police matters. <laughs> Lockpod right. police expert. All right. Andy Thanks, Short. Thanks, appreciate buddy. you guys. Good to see you. Thanks. Be safe out there, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Right, yeah. Are we going to wrap up now? I yeah, think that so. That handshake hurt Wow, me. Eva Holy coming God. at me in the chat. Really? Jesus. <laughs> Eva's the best. Yes, she is. Sick of Eva. John, gonna, stop yeah. being stubborn. Nothing is the matter with any of us. We're gonna, 12-year-old is fully vaxxed, and we're all fine. <laughs> I got the booster a couple well, weeks tell ago. Tell that to Sweden. What? They banned the vaccine. All right, brother. Be safe. Thanks, Chief. Uh-huh. Be I'm safe uh, out there. I'm going to get the booster as soon as it's offered. Agree. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on that. I know. You I know, know I, when I got my, pandemic. When I got my booster, the, the nurse giving it to me was like, you know, some people reported it was the same reaction as when they got the second one, and... I had no reaction. Good. I was totally fine. My arm didn't even hurt. I was just, and I got the flu shot at the same time. I want to get the booster. I'm going to get a flu shot also. And then I'm going to update my mu- measles, mumps, and rubella. MMR? Just, yeah. You're going for it? Oh, yeah, you should because I found out that uh, we're, our immune system gets rid of it faster. Oh. I'm no, See? Was what no about longer? tetanus? How often do we have to have tetanus? Well, tetanus you need to get that every year. Really? Oh, I, I don't. to get that. I'm just going to get okay. a bunch of shots like I was in the service again. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they take you to basic and they fill you with a bunch of vaccines. Like I said. Vaccines. They literally give you like four or five shots at one time. Mm-hmm. With They have guns. And they have multiple guns. Oh, sorry. Multiple <laughs> guns on your arm at one time. And they go, three, two, one. <laughs> I saw like you with like at, five of them, you're like, Ugh. I saw you at a Deficient. campaign stop, and there were a bunch of veterans in the crowd, and they were all shaking their heads, like, Yeah, yep, that's you'll never forget. Do. That's what they do. It's so quick, too. And then you said, like, I don't have, I didn't get a choice of like, I don't want three and five. That's right, right. <laughs> they didn't say, Oh, <laughs> would you like measles, mumps, and rubella? How about smallpox? You know, how about tetanus? No, they just go <laughs> your property of the government, right? And by the way, no offense to the officers out there that in Chicago they're holding out, but you're in a similar line of work. You take orders. You, you put your body in danger, right? You sort of gave up a lot of your rights. When, when I became a squid, I gave up my rights, and I couldn't negotiate on whether or not I got a shot. When you sign up to be a police officer, you put yourself in the line of danger. You do. And it's, you're part of the chain of command. And you have to listen to your bosses. And if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. I couldn't quit the Navy. I couldn't just say, okay, I'm done. I, I want to go home, Captain, right? I signed up for the Navy. You're a police officer. You could quit. Just quit. Just go, right? Like, go, you know, do something else. I mean, I sympathize with you. And if there you're are really police that strong, officers that have done that's that. That's right. Amen. If you're that strong-willed, then yeah. go. Go find another job. You can't be a police officer and not take orders from go the mayor. Go work for Senator Braun. Right. And I'm not, yeah, go be part of his police force. <laughs> that's so funny. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize senators had police force. But I tell you what, I guarantee you that a lot of the officers that gave up their job in Chicago are head cases. And the mayor is probably happy to be rid of them. I'll be honest with you. Because... A lot of the problems you get as mayor comes from the police department, the fire department. And I'm not saying the department as a whole. It comes from a, a, a select number group, of officers. Yeah. And I imagine these officers are the ones that cause her a lot of problems. So. I, you know, one of the things you've got going for you, Mayor, like the, even this, you mentioned that your relationship with the FOP is probably as good as it's I love been. police officers. Yeah. I do. And I, it's I, interesting because they're you are, the good guys. You are pro-police. I'm unabashedly pro-police. And that's why I think it's interesting on this issue it's important for you as a mayor. The police know what I'm talking know. about, yeah, Kevin. Absolutely. They know. You have to listen to orders. That's part of the gig. If you stop listening to orders, you got no, what are you going to do? Everybody gets to negotiate with like different bosses. Like that doesn't work that way. 
This is a military organization from the top down. The top is the mayor, the bottom is the new employees, and there's a bunch of people in between. And if that doesn't work, then you got to flush out the problems and start fresh. Yep. By the way, being a police officer is a great job. Go work in Chicago. It sounds like they got a lot of upcoming openings. <laughs> Seriously. It's about 35% of hiring going on in Chicago right now. You can make $100,000 a year as a police officer. If I was a good young man or, you know, young boy or girl and I wanted a good career, I'd go to Chicago right now. Come to Hammond first, though. Yeah. So is this, um, when does this go into effect? Has it, by this it's, weekend, it's already, already been passed. passed? Yeah, John, we're already okay. passed. Now it's legal. And but there's like dual lawsuits going. But they're not going to win those lawsuits. FOP. I, no way. And then, by the way, there's a non, there's a, there is a non-walkout, non-strike clause in That's the contract. Right. And right. this guy, wow. there is a quote from this guy Work where he said, hold the line. That's right. Don't, mm. you know, don't go. If, you know, he said, if, if, if more of our lot, members, right? if so many of our members don't show up, that's going to lie in the footsteps that, of the, I don't know if it's federal, it's definitely state law. But then, Illinois. then Illinois then is a statute. Mayor Lightfoot's a lawyer and she's smart. And a formal federal prosecutor. You may not think she's a good mayor and you may be right. But she's a damn good lawyer. Very and she, good. So as soon as this dummy from the FOP in Chicago <laughs> starts saying what he's saying, she's like, she's that's like, a work stoppage. I love it. She's using federal terminology, and this dumbass doesn't even realize yep. he's getting lit up by and her. And he had to back off. He's going to get indicted by the feds if he keeps on pushing this kind of stuff. She so. was a former federal prosecutor. She did a lot of police she oversight. She knows what she's doing. She knows. Every, lawyer, tell. every lawyer that sees her knows what she's doing. Yep. She's trying to pin this guy in a corner, and yep. he'll end up with federal charges. She's doing a good job of it. I agree. So It's a mess. Good luck. Yeah, man. Stay safe. Wrap us, wrap us for up. For the record, I'm a humongous supporter of the police department. Not, not just Hammond. I'm a police officer supporter. And I think that my party has gone astray in that regard, and I'm going to be the kind of guy that pulls us back into supporting the blue, okay, including the Capitol Police, Todd Young. All right? But mm -hmm. the fact is, in this case, you can't have what's going on in Chicago. You have to have the mayor in charge. You have to. It's just like the governor's in charge of the state of Indiana, right, including the state police. The mayors are in charge of, you know, and the sheriff's in charge. And if we lose that, you got nothing. A lot of dysfunction. You so. got anarchy. And then public safety is at issue. So Thanks, everybody, for listening to Lockpot. We'll be back on Tuesday with a full compliment. It's great to have Notorious LMP. Good to see you, sweetheart. Yay. Yeah. And then uh, Jay Vez, thank you mm. uh, for another great show. Mm. By the way. There was technical difficulties when I was on JLB the other day. Did you notice oh, that? Oh God, it was oh, I hilarious. Heard. I didn't. I didn't give you. No, John didn't that. watch. Remember, he was I, principal. I heard, John. Not all producers are made equally. John, didn't go. I was appreciating you that day. <laughs> Thank you. It doesn't happen often. See, maybe that was a good thing about him going on, John. He knows the difference now. Yeah. As soon as I get on Facebook, drops. It was. A it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was laughing. He's got a greater off. appreciation for the Vez. The Temporarily, Vez. The Vez John. Does it'll pretty go good down job. Hill again. Oh yeah. yeah. You have to remind him regularly. <laughs> Back on once, Tuesday, I'll be back to my guy. normal Vez hating self. But today. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Right. Chat too. Thank you, Chad, for coming at me today. <laughs> John's had a great day. John's like, get the weekend here. He's, a, he's been quiet and grumpy all yeah, day. You so. know what's happening. Good to see the caboose today. Thanks, Kevin Chandler. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, I'm about to hit the road. Go be a Senate candidate. So right. thanks for listening. Good Good luck. Luck. Everybody on Tuesday. Take care, everybody.